Hello, welcome to my channel, LSX Flashing and Tuning. First, I want to say thanks for clicking on my videos and subscribing to my channel. Um, I've become a, a real YouTuber one of these days, but for now, I'm just, just getting started. Um, the videos I like to produce are I hope I hope to be useful and have uh, meaningful content and uh, help people out. Um, I don't think I'll ever produce videos where I've fill up a swimming pool full of Jello and see if I sink or swim. Uh, don't think it does society any good. It may be entertaining for two-year-olds, but for me, I just don't find it uh, worth worth uh, worth society's time to look at it. But uh, that's another issue. So let's talk about LS engines. So um, I just got this block back from machine shop, and it's clean. Uh, and um, they use an acid solution to clean the block in a, in a hot tank. They spin it around and it cleans out all the crevices and gets all the goop and sludge out of it and it's really clean. But in the process, it damages cam bearings. Cam bearings are softer and made of uh, bronze and, and different materials, aluminum and so forth. And uh, the cleaning solution damages cam bearings. So you have to remove, you can either let the material damage them and take them out or you can take them out beforehand, which is what I did. So I have my own cam bearing installation tool, which is right there. It's made by Lyle. I paid about $125 for it, but I think six years ago. But that's how you uh, install cam bearings. You basically just use these adapters and put them in, put the bearing adapters and drive them in. Uh, there's nothing really difficult about it. Um, but anyway, um, I'll, I'll actually show the installation of the bearings in another video. But for now, what I think is more important is explaining, uh, eliminating some confusion on what LS, what what cam bearings to buy for an LS motor. Um, there are actually, uh, well, let me back up. When I got this engine block back from the machine shop, he asked me if I'd bought my cam bearings yet, and I said no. And he said, well, I got the best cam bearings that money can buy for this engine. And I said, well, okay, I guess I'll buy them from you. So I bought them, paid about $45 for them. Um, but when I got home, I wanted to say, okay, how much money could I have saved if I'd bought them off of like Rock Auto or something? So plus I want to see if there's other brands out there that were equivalent. So. I googled, uh, went to Rock Auto and looked up the uh, 2004 Avalanche and um, found that uh, there's actually two designs for cam bearings. This was called uh, first design and second design. Well, that made me more curious, so I kept googling and, and trying to find out more information. I finally discovered there's actually three different designs or three different sizes for cam bearings for LS motors. And all the, the sizes are determined by this hole right here, the diameter of this hole. So when measuring the diameter of the hole, you know which cam bearing model or cam bearing design you have to buy. So let's start with the first design. The first design covers approximately 1999 to about 2003. And that is called a, uh, or the, the size of that bore is 2 point, 2.3, let's see, what is it, 2.326 I think it is. I've got, a, I'll post a chart at the end of this video on, on the sizes, but anyway. This, the early size hole here is smaller than the later, and you can see it with the dial caliper when you put it in there. So the first design, like I said, covers up to 2003. And the part number for that, at least in a Durabond, the, I, I have two sets here, Durabond, both of them are Durabond, Durabond cam bearings. The early design, or the first design, is called CH, CH10, um, or CHP10. The P indicates performance. It's a little bit of higher quality bearing. So this is what I bought from the, the engine uh, machine shop. So he said with CHP, which he was right, they're, they're a good, they're a good uh, bearing. However, my research indicated that there's a wider bearing. Wider implies better to me because wider, uh, you get a more, you can handle a better load. Um, that, that's what I learned from the V6, Vortec V6. The bearings are kind of narrow. Those things spin bearings quite easily. But anyway, if you look straight down these bearings, you can tell, if I put them side by side a little bit better. Side by side, you can see that the uh, second set's a bit wider. It's still not good to see. Yeah. All right, so there, so this bearing is good, a little bit wider, maybe about a tenth of an inch wider than the other bearing. So. So back up, so you have CH10, which is the early design that fits 1999 to 2003. After 2003, again, this bore went bigger. And then you have to use a different model, which is the CHP or CH23. All right. 
So also, each of these bearings fits, you have to match these bearings to the right hole. There's a chart in here that says, you know, this bearing goes in the end hole, this bearing goes in the other end. You must put them in the engine in the order in which you are the package in this box. They're also stamped with a number on them, so you have to put the bearings in the right order. But the CH23 is used on 2004 up to 2008, so that's called the second design. Then you have the third design, which is from 2008 and up, and they are the wider bearing. So again, um, uh, to me, they're a better design, and that's what I plan to use in my block. My block's a 2004, and I, like I said, I originally purchased the CHP23 for it, but after my research, I decided to use this wider bearing, the CH25. Now, the CH25 is backwards compatible back to 2004, so you can use the CH25 from 2004 on up, but you can't use the, the CH23 from 2008 and up. It's too narrow. Um, the letter cans uh, look to me like they need a wider bearing. So that's the rundown on the can bearing. So you've got CH10s for 2000, excuse me, 1999 to 2003, CH23 up from 2004 to about 2008, and then CH25 on up or back to 2004. And in, my, in my opinion, the CH25 is, is the better bearing, and that's what I plan to use in this 2004 block. So I just wanted to clear that up and, and uh, help people understand that you uh, you need to get the right cam bearing before you try to put them in or, or you can damage them and have to buy another set. Um, so speaking of cans, um, this is a 2004, it's a LM7, and like all LM7s it has a rear uh, cam sensor. Like you can't see it, there's a hole, so I put my finger down there, there's a hole right down here. That's where the cam sensor comes in. And that cam sensor picks up on this reluctor. Here's the cam that came out of this engine right here. The reluctor uh, right, is right here. I guess you call it the trigger wheel, or right here. And that's what the cam sensor picks up on, on the LM7. But the cam sensor is in the back of the block. Well, in, in my, um, I had actually bought an LX6, which is aluminum 5.3 about six years ago. And it came with a cam sensor on the front of the block. This is the cover. And there's the cam sensor on the front. And instead of having the reluctor on the back of the, this is an LS2 cam that I bought. I think I bought it off, um, I want to say Craigslist, but uh, I think I spent like 60 bucks for this cam. It's an LS2 cam, and it's going to hopefully make this 5.3 perform a little better. But as you notice, the reluctor trigger for the uh, cam sensor is, not, is no longer on the back of the cam. So what they did was they moved it to the front. And you have what's called a 1x trigger wheel. This is the cam sensor. This is a raised part on the cam gear. And that's what triggers this front mounted cam sensor. And this is called a 1x cam gear, uh, I guess you call it a trigger wheel. But, um, and it's also a three bolt. So it fits my three bolt LS2 camshaft. So you must switch to the front mounted cam sensor when you use a LS2 or, or I think a 2004 and up camshaft because they no longer have the trigger for the, uh, the old style cam sensor in the back of the block. So that's some other information that if you, you need to know if you're going to switch to a, a letter cam in a, a 5.3 LM7 motor. Um, so to wrap up, um, I've just got this block back from the shop. It's, it hadn't even put the, I haven't stuck any of the freeze plugs back in it, the oil gallery plugs or any of that stuff. I'm about to. I'm going to start rebuilding the rebuild process this week. And uh, what I'm waiting on now is I've ordered a flex home so I can home these cylinders. Um, they're, in pretty, they're in very good shape. There's no scoring, but there's hardly any cross hatching left in there. And I'm going to put new rings on the old pistons. Um, the old pistons are uh, right there on the shelf. Uh, hadn't cleaned them up yet, but I'm going to put old pistons with new rings and new bearings back in the same bore, I'm not going to bore it out, but I need to hone it. So I'm waiting on Flex Hone to hone these cylinders for the new rings. Now, by the way, I bought a, uh, it's a four and one eighth inch uh, Flex Hone with 300 and I think 320 grit for Molly rings. So that's what I'm going to do with this engine is just to uh, kind of freshen it up, but try to keep it as cheap as I can by reusing pistons and uh, not reusing the camshaft, but uh, pistons and heads. The heads are on the shelf right there. They got to be cleaned up too. So, and there are 862 heads, by the way. So this motor with the LS2 cam might make a little bit more power. Um, just trying to make it uh, 
a little bit better of an engine. Hopefully I can get, maybe I can get 310, 320 horsepower out of it. That'd be fine for me. So uh, that's it. Hope you enjoyed watching the video and learned something about LS cam bearings. And uh, uh, stay tuned for when I start putting this motor together. And I'll have a complete series on uh, building an LS, uh, LS LM7 from scratch. And I'm going to uh, produce my videos in a way that hopefully a beginner can follow along and, and rebuild an engine without any experience. So thanks for watching and uh, stay tuned.